What's going on, Coach Marsh? How we doing over there, Coach? How you doing, man? You guys doing all right? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. Just hanging in there. How you doing over there? Can't complain. Can't complain. Crazy times, but um, yeah. You know, at least our family staying home, staying safe. Yeah, Hopefully, literally. you guys doing the same. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Right now, that's all that matters. Well, listen, I appreciate you being with me today. Um, just want to touch on the UMaine baseball program, man. I know you've uh, you guys have done a great job over there. Uh, very fond of the program, what you all do. Um, how long have you been at UMaine? I've uh, so this is my third year here now at, at the University of Maine. Uh, I came on in uh, the summer of seventeen. Beautiful. Enjoying it. I, I love it up here. I really yeah. do. I really do. It's the type of place, you know, you come to once and you don't really ever want to leave. You know. And how did, how did you get involved with the University of Maine? Whew. Uh, so uh, I was running a, a, a travel baseball program uh, back in New York. And, uh, you know, like you, you know, I was uh, kind of communicating with a lot of different college coaches uh, and, and, you know, and helping them out with their recruiting process. and. You know, I was sending out emails, making phone calls, doing all that type of thing. And whenever one of our kids would go on a visit, I would go with them. So I got to meet a lot of different coaches and kind of build up a network because I knew I always wanted to be a college coach. Um, so, you know, in, in doing so, uh, uh, Nick Derba, our, our, our head coach, uh, got a bunch of emails from me. And, uh, you know, at one point I, uh, I reached out, I sent out my resume and told him I'd be interested if anything ever came up and sure enough, something came up. So he asked me if I was still looking for a job and, uh, he brought me up here and, you know, asked me if I'd like to come on staff and, you know, he's like, you want to take a week or two and think about it? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'll, you know, I'll take care of whatever I need to take care of and I'll be up here in two weeks. Um, so happens just like that it happened really quick and <laughs> i have no regrets it's been it's been amazing coming up here it really has yeah obviously it's worked out obviously you're having a great time um like i said everything we'll, we'll touch on um but the questions i have for you uh, can't can't tell you uh can't say enough about the program what you guys have done so um getting into that tell me about the program give me a little bit about it so um we play in the america east conference it's a seven team conference yep. um, the school itself, we'll start with that, uh, 14,000 students. Um, it's a state university, uh, so you have, you have state tuition. And we have uh, different programs where uh, if you meet certain grades, uh, 3.0 and 1120, um, you actually qualify for in-state tuition at your uh, respective state university. Awesome. So we have some different programs there uh, from the academic side of things. Uh, our two leading majors are engineering and business. Uh, the engineering programs in the top uh, 20% of the country and our business programs in the top 15%. Of the awesome. Awesome. I mean, you know, variety of majors as it's a state university, you know, cover pretty much everything uh, out there. And, uh, you know, that kind of covers things from an academic side. Now, as far as our program goes, you know, there's a lot of history here in, in Maine. And that was something that, you know, I, I found out very quickly in, in kind of coming up here. You know, we've had 115 guys go on to play professional baseball, and we've been to, you know, six, six, uh, 16 regionals and seven College World Series. Um, Amazing. So they, people care a lot about it. Yeah. Like, around, University of Maine, seven World Series. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty special. Like, you go around town and people know who you are. Um, and well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to cut you off right there. Yeah, when me. we went up there mm -hmm. um, for our winter camp, I loved, it was one of the the first things I, I recognize, I, I think we came in, man, it had to be 1130 midnight. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you would know better than I did. I, I think it was a Longhorn, State, a Longhorn Steakhouse or some type of roadhouse that was right there near Orono or in Orono. Mm -hmm. And um, myself and, and my assistant coach, Coach Mann, we walked in and every single person had a humane sweatshirt on, humane hat, anything that was related to humane. It was like it was like everybody there was just all in, um, not even just for baseball, but all into the school itself. Sure. All into the university. And you don't find that in many places. No. Like, it's a true college town, you know, and it's a type of place where everybody knows everybody. You know, you, you walk around town, they know that you're a baseball player. They know that you're a coach. You know, you see Scott at the gas station 
And, you know, in Orno, he's going to say, hey, coach, how's it going? You know, who's pitching this weekend? What do we got going on? And, like, people care. So that struck me right away. So, yeah. you know, and talking about program, those, those are some of the types of people that you get involved with, you know, on the, on the, on the outskirts of it. And then internally, you know, you know, our head coach, and obviously, you know, I wouldn't say anything, anything negative. <laughs> or would I ever think anything negative? Because I think he does an excellent, excellent job. I mean, Coach Darbo has played, you know, professionally with the St. Yeah. Uh, organization. Really, really smart guy. He's done a really good job with the program. You know, academically, the last few years, uh, we've set records for, um, you know, team GPA and having, you know, 24 guys over a 3.0, and that's something that we're very proud of. It's something that we're to strive to, you know, kind of push the limits even further. Um, so there are a lot of great things that are going out on up here uh, outside of baseball. Um, so, Well, listen um... – Touching on the whole baseball side, one of the things, again, going back to, to me being on campus and just mm-hmm. listening to, to you all as if I was a player, yeah. um, you guys talked about culture. That was a huge part of, of your, your mission statement um, mm-hmm. when speaking to the players. And uh, go ahead and brief me on that again. So um, first and foremost, we talk about being process oriented. Um, yeah. so that's, 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 I love that, by the way. Love that. It's, uh, I know, I know um, process can be you know, a cliche, it's, it's something that's spoken about a lot. Um, and there's a good reason for that because there's a lot of, a lot of backing to it, you know, when, uh, it's, it's trusting in it, you know, and, and that's what baseball is, you know, sometimes you do everything right, you know, and you don't get the results that you want. Um, and we talk to our guys about not only, you know, trying to prepare them and take a look at their preparation all the time, um, for each baseball game, but also taking a look at their preparation for everything that they do. So it goes back to how they get ready, how they come to the field, you know, how, what, how they behave in the locker room, you know, how the field gets set up. All those little things are, are very important to us. And it's kind of taken off where, you know, we started speaking about a lot of these things in the last couple of years and um, where they're, they're policing themselves a lot of the time. Yeah. too. And that's when you know that you have something that, that's really good. Um, our teams have progressively gotten closer and closer every single year. And that's something that's really important to us. Um, you know, because I mean, they spend so much time together and it's a long season. It is. And our facility allows that to tightly kind of happen as well too. In addition to all the travel and doing everything that we do, you know, we have our clubhouse right on campus. We have our field right on campus, our locker room, all of our indoor stuff right on campus. Yeah. So our guys have an opportunity to spend time together outside of baseball. So I think that really aids in the team culture as well, too. That's awesome. And, and I think going back to what you said uh, previously, small town Orono, mm-hmm. um, can't really make mistakes as a player there without someone finding out, um, which is, is a nice feeling. You know, as, as a coach, I'm sure it's nice to know that there, are, there is eyes everywhere. People care about the program. And I'm sure the, the boys and the culture you guys establish – you know, you guys teach them that and it becomes a family thing. Right. I mean, this, this is more than about baseball. Yeah. You're, if we're doing our job right, you know, these four years that they have are a great four years, but there's better time ahead of them. Yeah. It's, it's not about these four years. It's about how they're prepared for life after college, whether it be to go on and play professionally and have every opportunity to have success at, at the professional level or in their family lives as, as fathers, um, as, as a family man yeah. in, in the real world, you know, doing, doing real world work. Um, 100%. You know, that's, that's where that team culture kind of goes from there. And, you know, we, we talk about a lot of things with our guys and um, some of the things that we've done in the, in the past. I mean, you know, we've, we've taken the time to, to go to lunch with some of our guys and, you know, really get to know them, you know, because with us, our players aren't just a guy on the field. You know, they're, they're more than that. You know, yeah. they're a person. Yeah. And it, we have an open door policy. They come up, they speak to us whenever they like. You know, some of our guys make a cup of coffee, sit down in the office, talk over some video. Some of them are sitting there watching Sports Center, hanging yeah. out. You know, some of us, them are telling us things about their personal lives. Some of them are just having conversations, just trying to hang out with us. 
And that's an awesome feeling as a college uh, student athlete, especially in um, kind of the lead into that. I know, um, you know, I'll touch base on one more thing in terms of you guys being so close and a tight unit. Um, I know when you walk into the clubhouse, like the upstairs portion, um, I know you guys have done family meals there, yeah. um, team meals, things like that, which again, I love, I love everybody's close together. They're all working together. Um, but I'm assuming leading into the before they get there, when you're looking at them while they're in high school as a recruit or a potential recruit, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're looking for some of those same categories. Um, some of those same characteristic traits that way it leads into that. Am I, am I assuming correctly? hundred percent. I mean, we, the guys that we love having on campus with us, you know, are guys that are going to work first. Like yeah. that, that's one of the, that's one of the larger things, you know, and you know, when you're, when you're talking to a lot of people, everybody's a hard worker, but you, you, you eventually find out who the real workers are and who yeah. are because we have a younger staff and we're at the office all the time. Like we're going to work, you know, yeah. like, we're going to be there. You know, there, there've been plenty of days that I've been in there from seven, seven thirty in the morning until 10, 11, 12 at night, you know, and we're going to be there for our guys. And we want our guys to want to work too. You know, we want those types of people. Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if they're serious about improving, if they're serious about improving in any facet of life, it's about, it's about work ethic. So that's one of the things that, you know, we love having. You know, we also we're, we're, we love having guys that are just good people, you know, good teammates. They support their teammates. You know, they, they make a mistake. They move forward. They help other people move forward. You know, they're the first guy out of the dugout to high five somebody when they do something good. You know, it, to win a championship, you know, in, in my opinion, to win a championship, you have to have those types of people. You know, when you have a guy that, you know, hits a ball in the gap, you know, and, and the left center, the left fielder drops it and he looks at the scoreboard to see if it's a double or an error. That's not a guy that, yeah. you know, that wants to win. That's a guy that wants it for me, you know, that wants it on a stat sheet, you know, and, and those two things should be working hand in hand, you know, but um, those are some of the things that we enjoy having with us, guys that put the team first. And those are things that we talk about all the time. We have classrooms every single, every single Wednesday in the fall. Uh, we go over some things that have to do with baseball. We go over some things that have to do with just what we want out of our players, you know, and developing them off the field as well, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I like to hear because a lot of the times, especially being a part of uh, Scorpions um, mm -hmm. and, and being in this industry for a good amount of time, you know, a lot of the focus – and, and rightfully so for the uh, student athlete that's looking to be recruited. You got to have the skill set. You have to have the technique, things that are baseball specific. Sure. But it's nice to hear um, that you're looking more into that. That's something we try to tell our players too. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's simple little things, hustle, uh, you know, being a positive teammate, all those little details. Um, that it's great to hear coaches acknowledging that and looking for that as well as the skill set. hundred percent. Like I would rather have a kid that's going to put in the work. That's going to hustle all the time. Yeah. That's going to do all that stuff. Like we, we have some of those guys on our team right now and it is an absolute pleasure to work. And I'm, I'm sure you know that as a coach too. Yeah. Like, yep. You love those kids. You know, the kids yep. that, you know, you give them information. They're like, I want more, you know, I, I'm going to take that. I'm going to do that right away. You know, those guys, that are like a little bit like sick in the head like they're a little bit off it's a different it's a different breed but it's a good thing it's a really good thing and those are the guys that are like we want to be surrounded by that's awesome that's awesome now just being in the times we are um how is uh the COVID-19 virus affecting you guys with recruitment anything any any effects whatsoever well, no, it honestly, it, it hasn't it, like it's impacted some things with like, you know, the, 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 the transfer type stuff. But as far as like our, our high school stuff goes, our uh, all of our committed guys, we're honoring all of our commitments. So it hasn't awesome. been anything with that. You know, it's uh, it's it's a crazy time out there. That's for sure. You know, as you know, you know, but it's an opportunity. And it really is. And that's what we've tried to tell our guys. You know, we we've put together some programs for them, you know, to, you know, look at to do during this time you know some things you know keeping in mind social distancing yeah. all of that of course uh, but things that they can do at home you know with their families and this is this is a great time to spend time with your family I mean 
how many times have uh, have you had in your in your yeah. lifetime of baseball <laughs> have you had around your family? I'm I'm sure your wife must love it. Listen, um, I was laughing earlier because you were sneaking by the hallway, uh, mm-hmm. trying not to interrupt. But it's it's I I, I told her we were talking about the other day. Um, you know, we're very fortunate. I've got a five-year-old uh, right. who loves baseball, which I love. But, um, you know, we work opposite shifts. She's a teacher. I work a late night shift doing um, mm-hmm. all, the, all the baseball work. Yeah. Um, and you know how that life is. So that's, that's never true. ending. Um, but it's just, it, it went from being a time where it looked, uh, you know, scary and, and a place that we've never been in to a time where it, it's been awesome being around as a family consistently mm-hmm. um, and just being thankful for what you have and understanding that there's a lot more in life than baseball. Um, I know, I know a lot of young guys have been there and you have too. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the the younger you are, you know, certain things feel like they're the most important things in the world. And, um, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a time to step back and and really understand what is important. Listen, it teaches us lessons just like baseball teaches us lessons. hundred percent. Like life throws you a curveball, right? (laughs) <laughs> it throws you a curveball. You know, you're going to deal with some adversity. You're going to deal with adversity in this game. You're going to deal with it. We're dealing with adversity right now. You know, you're going to deal with adversity in the real world, and it's how you respond to it. I mean, you could look at this this virus as, you know, oh, man, this is why I'm not getting recruited. Oh, man, this is not why – this is why I'm not yeah. getting drafted. Oh, you know, this is why we didn't win, you know, um, because of the virus, you know, because I had no opportunity to get better. No, this is an opportunity to grow. You know, we have we have all this time right now to read, to work out, to do all these things that we can do and spend times and reflect and, and figure out how we can make ourselves better. And I think that that's, that's a really it's, – it's a great opportunity for all of us. Uh, it's like I was telling some of our players too. You find out who you really are. You exactly. know? Um, and just like you said, and, and I've touched on this with parents and, and players that are calling, and, and rightfully so, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> crazy times, and, and everyone's a little unaware of how to handle things. but the one thing I've, I've pointed out to them is it's, it's an even scale, you know, everybody's in the same boat right now. They're, it's, it's a country thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this is where you find out and nothing pleases me more than getting videos of kids, you know, with just a tee in a pop-up net or a tee in an open field, taking swings, coach, how's my swing look, throwing mm-hmm. balls off the, off the fence, throwing balls off the house and, um, just trying to stay in shape. I, I, I know I follow the Grizzlies all the time. <laughs> And, um, you know, guys, you know, doing sprints with a tire around their back and, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that, that, you know, you can really find out, you know, there's no excuses right now. It's an even scale. And, and right now, whoever's going to be the, the nitty gritty type kid that wants it, you know, it might end up working his, in his favor. hundred percent, hundred percent. Beautiful. I better. I mean, it's, uh, it's an opportunity. That's it. It's an opportunity to grow, you know? Yeah. That, we find, like you said, we find out who we really are right, right now, and I love that. That's awesome. Hundred percent. Well, listen, I'll, I'll I'll finish off with um last two things here. Um, you know, I was going to talk about day life as student athlete. I thought you um, uh, you you talked about it previously. I'll let you elaborate a little more on that. Um, mm-hmm. and if you can, just because I've been there, um, I'd like to hear more about the facilities in general and and why being a student athlete. Um, also ties in with the things you can do not only in the classroom but at the facility. Sure. Okay. So, average life in the day of a of a Maine black bear would be so if you're a freshman student, all of our freshmen are in a uh, student athlete only dorm. It's called Knox yeah. Hall. Yeah. Um, after their first year, they can move off campus if they'd like. Uh, many of them will, um, only because the, the cost of living in the area is is low relative to the cost of room and board. Um, so often, oftentimes they save money in doing so. Yeah. And uh, there's three apartment complexes that are right across the street from the university that are privately owned that only rent out uh, to um, university of Maine students. So they only awesome. rent out to college students. So it's not like they're, you know, intermixed with families and, and things going on in the, in the community and, you know, and strangers and such. Um, so, Regardless of uh, whether you're a freshman and you're waking up in Knox Hall or you're in one of the apartment complexes or somewhere in the area as an upperclassman, wake up. There's three cafeterias on campus that are all-you-can-eat buffet style. Um, there you go. There's another one that's a little bit higher end um, that uses what's called bear bucks. 
um, which is kind of like your your other uh, dining uh, funds that you can use. Um, so you wake up, they grab breakfast. Um, many of them will come down to our clubhouse, you know, drop off their stuff and head to class if they have morning class. If they don't have morning class, a lot of times they'll just spend their day there. Um, they'll do homework upstairs because we have – um, our lounge upstairs in our, in our clubhouse and they'll hang out up there, knock out some homework. If they need to go into the academic center as freshmen have six hours of mandated study hall, right, right. All, all new students have that, um, their first year, they'll head on over to our academic center, which is student athlete only. Uh, there's pl plenty of Mac computers and plenty of state uh, space and tables in there for them to knock out their work. Um, come back over. Uh, after class, we have practice typically at 3.30 each day, uh, depending on the time of the year. Um, we're doing something a little bit different this fall, where a couple days a week we're going to be going in the morning. It just works better for classes, uh, with some of our heavier class schedules being early in the week. Um, but we're typically at 3.30, and then there'll be lift after practice uh, on many of our days um, in the spring season. So... Um, they'll go practice, lift. Uh, we have our rec center as well, too, which has a few basketball courts. Um, it has uh, deck hockey, has the lifting area if they want to do an additional lift. <laughs> Got to have the hockey at Maine. Oh, 100%. And I, I, think, I think we spoke about this when you came up. Yeah. But it's going on now. This is the first year that they didn't. But three years our team has won the intramural uh, deck hockey championship. That's awesome. It's something they get really excited about. They get jacked up about that, but we, we want them to go out and compete and just, you know, experience college, you know, in a healthy way, you yeah. know, and there's a lot to that. And that kind of builds on a team culture thing too, and spending more time, time with your teammates and doing something outside of just seeing that guy in the locker room going to practice. Well, and that's why I like what you said about it being a healthy way because uh, same thing, we've been through it. Um, you mm -hmm. can easily get tied up, especially mentally. It's a mm -hmm. same, thing in, uh, same thing one day, same thing the next day, and it's just repetitive, right. repetitive. Um, and uh, as much as some people think that can be a good thing, it can also harm you a little bit um, when you lose certain perspectives on things. So great to hear that. Absolutely. So uh, that's typically how – uh, a, a normal day would work now it, it all depends on the time of the year um, so in the fall what we'll do is the, there's two portions to the fall so you have 45 days um, as per NCAA rules in the fall mm -hmm. uh, have you know your regular fall season so with your regular fall season you have 20 hours of, of practice and, and uh, baseball activities and lifting activities included in that so we'll practice six days a week uh, within those practices, there might be there's going to be a couple inter squads as well too. We'll usually play right in around eight to ten games or, or scrimmages in the fall, with a couple of those games being outside competition. Um, right around mid October, uh, we'll start on our individual period, and that's where you get into you know some more hitting group stuff. That's where we start to break down a lot more mechanical work uh, with our with our staff and our and our pitchers. We'll get going with our pitching coach and our head coach as well, because they kind of work. Um, coach Heath does a really good job with our pitchers. And coach Sherba will be there a lot of the time too as well. Um, and kind of, you know, putting them through their deload phase. And then as they start to build up, as we get closer to the season, yeah. what happens that second half of the of, of the fall. Um, that second half of the fall, we're going to lift. We're going to go from three days a week of lifting to four days a week of lifting. Um, as the hours kind of change from 20 hours a week down to eight, uh, yeah. so four hours of baseball activity and four hours of lifting activity. And then uh, when we get into the spring, uh, we'll have a couple lifts a week. We'll have two lifts during the week, and then we'll usually have a recovery lift on the weekend. And uh, our strength and conditioning coach, he does an excellent job. Um, he's also our athletic trainer. So the great part about that uh, for many mid-majors, they're not able to, to travel their, their strength and conditioning coach. Um, it, so he's able to go out there with us. He's able to be in the hotel with us. And he's That's huge. A, he's a tremendous resource yeah. to guys, you know, and being able to administrate those, those lifts on the road um, and, and be there for anybody that needs anything. And he also knows, knows the body just as well as anybody else does. 
And, you know, he knows, you know, somebody's hamstring might be bothering them. He knows that this is going on or that th- might be going on. So when he puts together their lifts, they're, you know, he can make a lift for that individual. Right. You know, and it, it cuts down on a lot of the injuries. And, you know, fortunately, we've had significantly less injuries in the last few years. And it's kind of a trend that's been decreasing over time. Guys are staying on the field more. They're getting more mobile, you know, and they're getting stronger, which is, uh, which is a great thing. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that is a good thing because um, I personally, this is my personal belief, mm-hmm. I think you guys play one of the toughest, <laughs> toughest schedules, non-conference schedules. Mm-hmm. Um, in all the country. I mean, every single year, the springtime comes around. I look at the UMaine uh, schedule and you are down South immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of colleges go down South and, yeah. uh, and of, of course being a Northern school, it's much easier to make sure you're guaranteed games. But I mean, you guys are down there for a while or, or coming back and shooting right back down there and you're not just mm-hmm. playing, um, you, you know, your average Joe, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I've seen like Texas tech um, and some, I mean, enormous Mississippi state. Yeah. So, uh, my first year we opened up at Texas tech. Uh, we played, uh, Miami that year. We played New Mexico state as well. Yeah. That year. You know, we played a lot of, a lot of very good mid majors, um, uh, down that way. UTRGV was one of them. Um, we played, we played a lot of good teams, uh, that my first mm-hmm. year, my second year here for the first seven weeks, we had the number two strength of schedule in the country, yeah. Yeah. you know, and playing, uh, we opened at Florida State, then we went to Maryland, then we went to Liberty, then we went to Mississippi State, um, and then Sanford, who's a very good team. Yeah, very good, very good. Alabama and Troy. Always, always underrated. Yeah, so we played against some some really good teams, and you know, I, I think it did a lot of a lot of a lot of good for us. You know, you have to have the right mentality kind of going into it. You want to compete, you want to win, but you also want to learn too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it, outside of providing a great experience for our guys, you know, and playing in front of 15,000 people at Mississippi State, yeah. you know, it, it also it provides exposure. You know, Jeremy Payne is one of our guys. And yeah. I'm sure you had a question about him uh, being oh, – yeah, Always. Um, Jeremy's a great kid. Uh, but, you know, when we're down at Texas Tech, he turns around a, a 97, 98-mile-an-hour fastball, you know, and puts it over the left center field fence, and there's plenty of people there to see him. Yeah. You know, that's that's one way to continue to you know show people that you can do it you know is by competing against those guys and and showing your abilities and outside of that you know you, you want to be the best you want to play in a regional you got to play against those teams well and, and that's why i like it it, it gives you that aspect mm-hmm. and, and and the other thing i mean just to be completely to be honest you guys are a mid-major yep. and you know more than likely you need to win your conference yep. in order to get in a regional so why not throw the kids right into the gauntlet and, and show them exactly what they're going to get, exactly um, where they need to be. You mm-hmm. talk about being process-oriented. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great way of just showing them exactly where they need to be at the end of the year. And mm-hmm. I'm sure it's um, uh, no schedule no matter what conference you're in is easy. I get it. You guys have stacks and stacks, and I think people you know, don't understand this aspect when it comes to scouting reports and everything else. You guys know each other like the back of your own hands. Mm-hmm. So um, it doesn't get easier. but you know, to see that and, and to get the exposure from that. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect package. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and from an offensive standpoint, I mean, you're going in and you're seeing, you know, a number one or number two in our conference, but yeah. you're not seeing them twice on a weekend. You're seeing them 13, 14 times in each weekend. Yeah, exactly. For the first six, seven weeks, you know, so in terms of getting our hitters on time and seeing, some really good stuff all the time, you know, I think, I think it definitely prepares us and gets us ready to go. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll finish up with this. I mean, again, um, you spoke a ton about the program, what you all do. I I know you guys got kids from Florida. Um, You know, you kids coming from all over the place. It's not even just new England or the Northeast, which I love. Um, But ultimately each year there's, there's a couple of you main kids on that draft board. And and you touched uh, you talked about him briefly, Jeremy Pena. He's a he's a Rhode Island great, um, and uh, he was uh, I believe a third round draft pick, mm-hmm. um, and he's done great things. Obviously, I'm sure you're aware of it. Still working out with him and everything, um, but it's not even just Jeremy Pena. 
every single year uh, there's a guy in the top 10 rounds, another one that comes through in the, in the teens and in the twenties. And it's, it's just funny to see, you know, you main a, a program that isn't a national known program. But again, you go back to everything you said, process oriented, looking for the right player to come in that fits the mold as a family, the way they handle their student athlete life, the way they utilize the facilities, healthy environment, and then you get them into the gauntlet and, and so on and so forth. I mean, it seems to, to all come into one, um, you know, final clear picture. And, and there it is right there. You got guys getting drafted. Absolutely. I mean, we've had, we've had six guys in the last two years go on to play professionally. Uh, That's huge. Had, uh, my first year, Jeremy, uh, Chris Beck. Beck, yep. Was our catcher. He went in the fifth round. Yep. The Toronto Blue Jays. And we had Brandon Vison's who was our center fielder and uh, is now with the uh, Chicago Cubs. And then my second year we had, um, we had Cody Lorison, uh, who's our number one, uh, one pitcher or would, uh, would pitch on Saturdays and um, in our seven inning game as we got late in the year. And he went to the Minnesota uh, twins in the fourth round. And then uh, Nick Silva got drafted by the Chicago White Sox. He was also a pitcher for us, a weekend starter for us, and um, you know, great arm. Um, he he went to the to the White Sox. Then we had Danny Casales, who was our third baseman, yeah. uh, who ended up with the Milwaukee Brewers. But every single one of those guys had had something in common, and it's because they worked. Yeah. You know, they made the most of, of what we have here at the University of Maine. That's what we want out of our guys. You know, we want those guys, as I said earlier, that, you know, that go in to the clubhouse and work. You know, yeah. there, there's – it's all there if you want it. You know, we have two cages in there. There's five mounds in there. We have a dome as well, too, right behind. I was going to say that you got the whole dome, too. Exactly. So if you want to put in the work, you can put in the work. And as I said earlier, like we're there to work. So, you know, if, if they need anything at any point in time, they know that they can come to us. They know that they can come sit down with us and speak to us about, you know, whether it be one of their at bats, offensive approach, their swing, you know, taking ground balls, whatever it might be, they can come to us. And those are the guys that, that have a lot of success. And that's what we really look for, you know, and all of those guys really put in the work. They've really yeah. did. And, yeah. and it showed. And it showed. Well, I'll leave it with this last story. Um, same thing when we, when we came up there as a group and, and got to participate for the, um, the recruitment camp. Um, one of our favorite things we ever did and, and what really set the tone for our kids and not even our kids, just us as coaches being there was, I believe um, we had a, you know, 9 a.m. start. Um, mm-hmm. We were in the dome and, you know, I think uh, my coach and I got there probably about half hour, 45 minutes early um, just to check it out. And I think it was Jeremy Pena and probably four or five other kids in a, in a full on sweat, um, running parachutes, mm-hmm. um, doing everything. And this is, this is during a time in which they, they don't even have to be doing it. Um, yeah. you know, this is, this is point no, to break. No, <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're by themselves. They're on their own do, so. doing everything by themselves. And, and right there, I remember our kids walking in and, and kind of looking and it's like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talk, obviously we talked to them and it was like, yeah, I've been here since 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there you go. That's, that's the type of kid that you need to be if you want that. And, and, and it's very plain and simple. That's why I like it. Um, if, if, you're, if you're one of those kids, you'll fit in great. If not, you know, mm-hmm. you need to learn. Well, that's, that's something that I've been very fortunate to be around. You know, and you want that as a coach. And I said that yeah. earlier and I talked about that. But, like, when you have those types of kids, it makes our job that much easier. Yeah. You know, we're not pushing kids and telling them, hey, you got to hustle. Hey, you got to you gotta work hard. Hey, you got to yeah. do this, you got to do that. When you have guys like Jeremy, when you have guys like some of the guys that we've had in the past and currently have, they push each other. Yeah. You know, and many of them are talking to each other right now. You know, oh, what are you doing right now? They're sending each other video. They're talking about things as well, too. And that's a beautiful thing. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And when they're able to teach something to somebody else, you know, they're able to learn it that much better themselves. So absolutely, it always makes me so happy when I see those guys in there together, whether, it, whether it's they're working on something offensively, you know, working on something defensively, running sprints. Yeah. You know, Pena's got the parachute. He's got the tire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is he's doing, you know, all those great things that he does or 
many of our guys do the same thing. It's, it's, it, you know, it just brings you a smile to your face as a coach. Well, listen, man, I, I appreciate it. I, I covered everything I need to cover. Um, again, I, I appreciate the time. I know uh, you guys still are busy, even though it is a, um, a different time uh, with all this going on, but I appreciate you at least, you know, talking to me and, and giving me some of this information and I'll, I'll leave it with, you know, stay safe. Um, really keep, doing, keep working hard like you always do. Um, tell everybody I said hello, Coach Durbin, everybody else. And um, we wish you guys the best. And, and hopefully um, we'll be seeing each other relatively soon. I'm looking forward to that, Cody. Definitely. All right, man. Well, listen, thanks again, Coach Marsh. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one.